What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Late December through early January of this year, we traveled to Norway to visit some family friends and cash in an invitation to visit. These family friends came to our wedding and invited us to visit them in Norway, so we took them up on the offer and we were there from the 27th of December through the 4th of January. Norway is an incredible place full of dramatic landscapes, exciting sights and very friendly people. Traveling in the winter as we did gives the opportunity to see the northern lights and participate in every winter sport imaginable, as well as experiencing the celebration of Christmas and New Year's in a very different perspective. Most of our time was spent just outside of Lillehammer, which is in the southern part of the country. And while we didn't get an opportunity to travel to some of the bigger tourist destinations like Oslo, Bergen, or the Lofoten Islands, Lillehammer was absolutely worth spending our time in. We also got to experience a deep brewing culture and did some home brewing with a local club. Many brewers now associate Norway with the Kvike farmhouse yeasts that are becoming commonplace in brewing today. But Norway has a deep and rich brewing history going back to the time of the Vikings, and it is still not widely known in the rest of the world. During the Viking Age, barley was the predominant crop grown in Scandinavia, and was mostly used to brew beer with, not necessarily to make bread with. Additionally, the Vikings were very fond of making ciders from apples and pears, as well as making meads from honey for very special occasions. However, ul, or ale, really was the most predominant drink in Viking communities. Brewing was in fact so important to the Vikings that Viking farmers were actually required to brew beer at least three times a year for various events, even after the Christianization of Scandinavia. Many of these farmers' yeasts persisted throughout time and history and evolved to become the kvike from various parts of Scandinavia we can find today. Of particular interest is the tradition of a Yule Ale, which still carries on to this day in Scandinavia through the form of brewing a Julebok. This is a strong Bach or Doppelbach style beer that is brewed with several variations and served for the Christmas holiday. Many of the Christmas traditions that we know today come from the Viking holiday of Yule. Things like putting up a tree and decorating it, making wreaths, Yule logs, and even the tradition of old bearded men visiting houses bearing gifts. These traditions were blended with Christian traditions once Christianity became the dominant belief in Scandinavia, leading to how Christmas is observed today. We actually took part in the tradition of Yulebuk, which actually translates to Christmas goat. And uh, side note, that's actually indeed the same word for the aforementioned Christmas Bach beer, since Bach is Germanic for goat. And um, I just found this very interesting. This is the tradition of dressing up as Santa and bringing gifts to people's houses. Although Norwegian Santa actually wears a big thick fur coat. Major Game of Thrones vibes. And winter is coming. Enough history though, let's talk brewing. One of the first things we did upon arrival actually was brew a beer with the homebrew club that our hosts belong to. Lillehammer Brigelaug is a collective homebrew club that shares the cost of maintaining and brewing with a 300 liter system in a really nice space. Their members help brew, clean, and maintain the space and the system, and they distribute the beer they produce amongst themselves. However, they also have a few grandfather systems that are used for experimental batches and for education. I was invited to brew with a few of their members on a grandfather. We brewed up a Maibach recipe that they developed, and I'll put that recipe up in the description box. Or if you want to pause the video, I'll put it up on screen as well. It's my first time brewing in a grandfather, and I really actually enjoyed it, although we did have some efficiency issues. Regardless, the brew day was lots of fun, and I enjoyed spending time with the club members and sampling their excellent beer. Thank you to Annette, Henning, and Dog for your hospitality and sharing the universal enjoyment of beer and brewing with me. Hopefully, we can do this again sometime. Yeah, now we're also on Lillehammer Bryggeri. So here is Bryggeri Maibok. So, but they're sliting a little with Ogen, though. But you're very welcome to Norge. It was hyggelig to have you here today. <laughs> Homebrewing is very much alive and well in Norway, and I would estimate it's as common, if not more so, than the U.S., and the craft beer scene is pretty good as well. Many of the same styles that we'd see in the U.S. were very easy to find and well executed. However, in similar fashion as the U.K., beer is highly taxed if it increases in alcohol content past 4.7%. You can buy plenty of 4.7% ABV beers in the supermarkets, but you need to go to the state-run wine and liquor stores to buy anything stronger, and it is very expensive as the alcohol goes up. 
At the time of making this video, one US dollar is equivalent to about 10 Norwegian kroner, and it's actually one of the best exchange rates in a while. But even with that, an average beer at an establishment is gonna be between 70 to 150 kroner, and that's about seven to $15. Even when buying low ABV beer at the supermarket, you are looking at about three to $4 per beer in a four or six pack. And this is one of the main reasons why homebrewing is so popular in Norway, since you can avoid the alcohol tax if you make it yourself. Another widely appreciated alcoholic beverage in Norway is Akavit. This is an 80 proof liquor distilled from potatoes and grain with botanicals of various kinds added, although most commonly caraway seed, and it's occasionally barrel aged. It is a peculiar spirit that sits somewhere between vodka, gin, and Irish whiskey. It's commonplace to have a glass of Akavit alongside a beer, and most often you will see it either as an after dinner drink or used for toasts. And there's actually quite a lot of variety within Akavit, and some styles are exceptionally localized. You can bet a bottle came home with me. There was a substantial amount of Akavit consumption during our trip, especially during the multiple parties we attended, one of which was immediately upon arrival. It's quite the experience when you've been awake and traveling for over 24 hours, are jet lagged, it's dark outside at 3 p.m., and now you're being force fed loads of Akavit by people who are mostly speaking another language. Regardless, it was an awesome welcome, and I'm amazed at how kind and hospitable everyone was. I'm also blown away at how well everyone immediately switched to English to let us know what they were talking about. I had a great time learning and exchanging information about customs and cultures with every Norwegian I met. They're very proud of their culture, rightly so, and enjoy sharing it and explaining it to folks like us who want to experience it and know more. And I'm sure many viewers are wondering, did I try lutefisk, the traditional fish, keyword with lye, and aged for a year? And I did not. That is actually a northern Norwegian delicacy. Since we were in the south, instead what I had was rockfisk, which is a fish that is cured with salt and fermented and then brined for a year. And I have to be honest with you, it's actually not that bad. It's quite salty and has a pretty strong smell, um, but overall it just tastes like salted fish. The worst part really is just the texture, which I can really only describe as mush. However, it's usually eaten in a flatbread roll-up with some onions and cream cheese, and actually that's pretty good. In addition to the rock fisk, there was plenty of locally hunted venison and moose, potatoes, various types of cured sausages, breads, and cheeses to go around for other things to eat. We attended no less than three Christmas parties while we were there and also explosively rang in the new year. Of course, with plenty of Akavit. The town of Lillehammer was a lovely place to visit as well. One night, we went to the Lillehammer Brewery, the only brewery in town for some drinks. The brewery has been in operation since 2006, but it's on the site of a much larger and older historical brewery that operated from 1847 until 1983. The current brewery is located in the original fermentation halls of the original brewery, and it shares that space with a nightclub. They have a very interesting system that uses a vacuum and heat to induce a boil instead of just heat. While I was there, I got a great tour from the brewer who also showed me a traditional kvaik yeast ring. This was the first time I'd ever seen one of these in real life, and I think the only reason I got so much interesting information about Viking brewing history and the brewery tour is because I knew what he was showing me. Lillehammer is a really wonderful town for more than just beer though. It's a very walkable town and is made even more picturesque by fresh snow. With Christmas decorations and shops all over the place, it seriously feels like Santa's village. Lillehammer was also the site of the 1994 Winter Olympic Games, and therefore has a very strong connection to winter sports as well. In fact, the ski jumping hill from the Olympics is right above the city and is still used daily. We had the opportunity to do loads of winter sports as well, including hiking up a small mountain to sled over a mile back down, ice skating on the frozen lake, downhill skiing at Hafjell, another winter Olympic site, and cross-country skiing under the light of the moon in the frozen snowscapes at a cabin only half an hour from the city. Because Norway is so far north, the day is very short in the winter, and most of the trip's activities were done in the dark. Sunrise was at 9.30 a.m. and sunset was at 3 p.m. And this cast everything in beautiful colors since the sun took so long to set and was always so low in the sky. 
The golden hour was more like two hours long on either side of the day and was followed up by a stunning blue hour that was only magnified by the sheer amount of snow everywhere. The long night allowed for great opportunities to see and photograph the northern lights. We saw them only once because clear skies were pretty rare, but they were absolutely spectacular, even if they were not nearly at full strength. I spent over three hours outside in minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit conditions watching, photographing, and even taking video of this incredible spectacle. Even if we only got to see a very small part of Norway, this trip was absolutely fantastic because of the experience of being immersed in the culture and experiencing the holiday traditions firsthand. I am incredibly grateful to have had the opportunity to travel there, and thank you so much to Anders, Annette, Martin, and Andreas for hosting us and giving us such a great time. Thank you to Lilyhammer Briggerlaug for having me as a guest and letting me brew with your equipment. Thank you to Lilyhammer Briggery for the wonderful tour in history, and thank you to my lovely wife for being the photographer and videographer for most of what you have watched today. I simply can't wait to come back again soon to see more of this amazing country and get deeper into the brewing traditions therein. Perhaps next time we'll explore the craft breweries of Oslo, or we'll head out to the west coast where traditional kvike brewing is continuing to this day. Or perhaps sometime we'll head up north and experience either the midnight sun or the very strong northern lights in Tromsø and see the Mac Brewery, the world's most northern brewery. There's a ton to do in Norway and we experienced just a small amount of it, but I'm incredibly happy to have had the opportunity to go. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you did, please go ahead and hit that like button. The subscribe button as well if you haven't already and comment down below with your thoughts. Have you been to Norway? And if you did go, let me know what your experience was like. If you want to support the channel and help make more trips like this a possibility, please consider purchasing some merchandise from the merch store linked down in the description box or just below it or by checking out my Patreon. My Patreon supporters are huge drivers behind this channel and help make it what it is. You have my utmost thanks. If you want to support the channel in other ways, I also have a channel memberships option. And if you feel inclined, there's also the super thanks button. All of these things mean a lot to me and I really appreciate them. I also have an Amazon store where you can find the brewing and filming equipment that I use if you're curious about them. And I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, so please do check that out for some more frequent content than just YouTube. Last but certainly not least, if you are still here, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. It means a lot to me since I put a ton of work into these videos, so you guys are the real heroes and you have my thanks. So until the next one, skull.